Hello folks. Here we are outside on a glorious summer day. And yes, it really is summer. I have my calendar out. It says June. That summer, officially, it began on the 20th. So I know what month it is, what day it is. And oh, you just have to sit outside and take in this beauty of nature to realize that it has is summertime. I think it's probably the longest summer vacation that my grandkids have ever had. Uh, started, I think, in mid-March and uh, probably the longest one of their school career, I would guess. But if you're like me, you can sit out on a day like this and just close your eyes and it can take you back to things that you remember that you loved to do and when you were a kid, things that only happened uh, on summertime days like this, like these flies that are biting at my ankles right now. I'll try not to swat them too much, but anyway. One thing I remember a lot as a kid is uh, going to grandma's house and uh, these hollyhocks. I'm here with these beautiful hollyhocks at Ron and Karen May's house today because they remind me of my grandparents. Grandma and Grandpa Smith had hollyhocks planted at their house on London Road. And when I was a little girl, my daddy transplanted some of them along an old rail fence at our house. We had hollyhocks and then there was a bunch of rhubarb and hollyhocks and rhubarb and I can't see a hollyhock without thinking of them. Fond memories for sure. I'm sure many of you have great memories about uh, grandparents and visiting their place. Uh, I know that Cindy Miller did. In fact, she put them down on paper. It's a wonderful story that just paints a uh, a great picture of what it was like for her when she would go visit Grandma and Grandpa. And, and uh, I want to share it with you. Grandma's house. Come with me to Grandma's house. It's a fun place to visit. Join me on the squeaky porch swing. We can spend hours here just talking or playing games. How about a game of hide and seek in the front yard or tag or kick the can? My cousins will come over and play with us and we'll have enough then for Red Rover. Hurry, I want to show you a very special place. Out in the back of the house, there's a shed that is half full of corn cobs. The door opens halfway up to hold them in. Climb over, these cobs are soft and a little scratchy. Grandma uses them to start a fire in the cook stove. Sometimes the cats are in here too. Don't you feel like we're just in our own special little world? Let's pretend it's our hiding place and the Indians are after us, okay? I'm getting hungry. Let's go pull a stalk of rhubarb. We'll go inside and we'll get some salt to dip it in. Hold out your hand and make a cup for the salt. Isn't that rhubarb juicy and sour? Grandma sometimes puts rhubarb in a pie, but I like it best, just like this. Do you like grapes? Let's go to the grape arbor and pick some sweet purple grapes. Be careful now, don't you swallow the seeds. Grandma makes jelly out of these grapes and grape juice. Out in the garden, we can pick a plump red tomato, still warm from the sun. See how heavy it feels in your hand? That's because it is so full of juice. Go ahead, take a great big bite. And then look at your arms. The juice is making little rivers in the dirt as it runs down to your elbow. I'm gonna show you a special place where grandma's fishing worms live, just outside the back door. She won't tell anyone her secret, but lots of worms live there. She sells them to fishermen. I know she puts coffee grounds here, but I am not sure what else makes them want to live here. Come over to the pitcher pump. I'll pump while you wash your hands and get a drink. And then you can do the same for me. 
Isn't the water cold and delicious? Come inside and I'll show you around. The kitchen has the biggest table and it is always full of dishes that grandma has prepared. She makes ketchup and tomato juice and canned tomatoes and green beans and peas and corn, all from her garden. There's usually a bowl of stewed prunes on the table. And I'm gonna ask her to make my favorite pie, a raisin pie. It is so dark and sweet and the crust is flaky and brown. She makes noodles and bread too. Over here, is where she rolls out her noodles and her pie dough. When I stay all night, she will make me toast in the morning on the oven of the wood burning cook stove. We put butter on it and we churned ourselves. The toast just crunches with flavor. I get to have hot tea and coffee sometimes with lots of sugar and milk. No, and she may let us help her churn the butter and afterwards we can have some buttermilk. This is the ice box. When the ice man delivers fresh ice, we go out to the truck and we pick up a piece and we wrap it in paper to eat. It tastes so good on a hot day. See that big bowl, big roll of white butcher paper? Grandma lets us have big pieces of it to write and to color on. I told you it was a lot of fun here. Grandma's getting ready to iron clothes. See the black irons on top of the stove? She will use one and the others will stay hot so she'll have a fresh one. It doesn't matter how hot it is outside, everything always gets ironed. Grandma has been piecing together a quilt top See this bag of brightly colored scraps? She cuts them into squares and all the same size. Then she stitches them together by hand with a needle and a thread. We take it outside and we lay it over the plain backing. Then grandma lets me get on the quilt with a needle and bright red yarn. I run the yarn through both layers and cut the yarn so that it can be tied to hold the front and the back together. Then the edges will be bound and a new quilt will be ready for winter. I want to show you grandma's bed. She lets me sleep with her when I stay all night. It is a big feather bed and it is so soft and warm. You sink right down in the mattress and you have to fluff it up the next morning so it will be ready for use again. Over here is the Victrola. Let's see if grandma will let us play records. See the little dog that's on each record? We have to turn the crank to get the record started. I go first. And when it starts to slow down and sound funny, it will be your turn to turn the crank. This is grandma's rocking chair. She sits here beside the table to read. Sometimes at night I get scared by the shadows on the ceiling from the kerosene lamp. The dark corners of the room away from the lamp look very scary too. Sometimes I have nightmares about someone hiding in those dark corners. The stove over there keeps the living room warm in the winter. You can see the red and orange flames through this little glass in the front. I like to sit behind the stove when I'm cold. It feels so good. On Sunday, we gather around the radio and we listen to The Shadow and Amos and Andy. I'm glad you could come with me to grandma's house. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> yes, that was fun, Cindy. And so many of those things reminded me of visiting my grandma's house. The table that was always full of food, the homemade bread, the baking, going outside and taking the old tin cup off of the water pump and pumping it full of water and and having a drink of water. One thing I'm not sure about is that breaking off the rhubarb and dipping it in salt. Nope, don't think that um, I ever did that. May have to try that sometime. But everything else you talked about, the feather beds upstairs, the quilts that had the ties on them, the grape arbors, the juicy tomatoes. There was an, even an old ice box 
on the back porch. Now, there was never an ice man that delivered ice when I was a little girl, but my daddy would talk about that. And oh, of course, he talked about the Victrola. I have his Victrola. And all the records with the little white dogs on them. I think it would be fun today if we also visited some folks that can tell me their visits of, or their memories of what visits were like to grandma's house. Won't you join me? Okay, folks, look at this pretty lady. This is my sister-in-law. Y'all, many of you recognize her, Peggy Miller. And Peggy probably knows more about what summertime is like at uh, grandma and grandpa's house than anybody I know because Peggy was raised at her grandma and grandpa's house, right? Right. How old were you, Peggy, when you first started living with they, grandma and grandpa? I was a sickly little baby that they thought was going to die, and I was five months old, and they took me. And needless to say, I survived very well. <laughs> <laughs> and it was because of, what What would you tell me earlier? It was because of that real cow's milk that your grandpa fed you. Real cow's milk from a little... Uh, I don't know if she was a whole, I know she wasn't a Holstein, a Jersey maybe, or a Guernsey cow. Tootsie. <laughs> of course, they all had names, didn't they? Tootsie, yes. Tootsie? Yes. Okay. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. What else can you remember from Grandma and Grandpa's oh, growing up? Grandpa had a huge garden every summer, and he used a push plow to plow it with and keep the weeds out. And then he had a roller that he made out of a five-gallon bucket full of cement. And he'd pull it behind him. And he'd dare anyone to put their, as he said, their big feet in his garden. <laughs> Keep your big feet out of my garden. <laughs> what kind of good stuff did he grow in that garden? Everything you can think of. Corn, green beans, tomatoes, sweet potatoes, radishes, onions, carrots, anything you could, lots of lettuce, different varieties of lettuce. And we ate very well all summer. And I learned to can and preserve and freeze food, make jams and jellies. For my grandma, that was what we did. I sit out in, under a tree and break beans and shell peas and, mm -hmm. and butter beans, as we called them then. And <laughs> you don't even hear anybody eating butter beans anymore. We, you I, did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and those were your favorite to shell, right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wear blisters on your thumbs trying to break open those butter beans, and get right. those beans out. Right. The only thing worse was the year we went to Tennessee and we got a whole bunch of uh, black eyed peas from my great uncle John. Getting those out of a, a shell was, oh, it was murder. <laughs> I bet it was. I had begged my grandpa to raise some black eyed peas. Not after that. <laughs> Live and learn, live yes, and learn. So yes. he'd grow all this stuff and then bring it in for you girls to work on in, yes, the, in yes. the summertime. Yes. So, but he wasn't he wasn't uh, too good to help with it though. He he had help with it. Good for him. The canning and the good for him. What was your grandma and grandpa's name, Peggy? Uh, Leela and Jesse Adcock. Okay. Leela and Jesse Adcock, and they lived over between Pleasant View and Brookfield. Is that right? Right. right. Okay. And then later on, we moved to Franklin, to a little place in Franklin, okay. outside of Franklin. Okay. And uh, Grandpa always had chickens and his cow, Tootsie. And every Wednesday night, we went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And on Wednesday night, he'd take the preacher's family, two dozen eggs, and a pound of butter. Homemade. <laughs> homemade butter. Homemade. Home, uh, yes. So grandma churned butter too. Had a, a churn with a big crank on top. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the preacher got butter all the time. A pound of butter and two dozen eggs every week. <laughs> and that's not counting in the summertime. They'd get green beans, corn on the cob, 
butter beans, tomatoes. Yep. Yep. Did, did they pay doctors that way too? I heard people. No. Nope, no, they didn't. Doctors no. got money back then. Well, okay. not as, not from where I remember. They, okay. I, I don't remember them ever paying the doctor that way. With, with produce and chickens. Yes. And, yeah, chickens too. Yes, yes. had chickens. And um, Grandpa had a, an egg route. Huh. And every Thursday he ran his egg route. It was in Beach Grove. And then in the summertime, I'd get to sit and help him wash and dry and polish the tomatoes to take <laughs> to his egg route. And the same way with cucumbers, they had to be washed and dried and everything had to be just really, perfect. just perfect. Good. Perfect. And we ate the cracked eggs. The cracked eggs. Okay. If they had a crack in them or something, we ate the cracked eggs. Ah. And I, he really resented it if he had to give you good eggs, too. <laughs> could have made some money off of those. I can hear it now, right? Right. <laughs> that was it. Oh, goodness. So tell me about spending time in the kitchen with Grandma, the things that it, it, she yeah. did. Well, we, we did the dishes, cooking canning um, and I learned to uh, can and preserve from her I learned to cook mm -hmm. and I was in 4-H so and you still can and preserve I still do I still do it it served me well with four children and living on a farm oh I'm sure I'm sure but I'm uh, those are are really wonderful memories though of spending time doing that. You told me that your grandfather also raised some little rabbits? Yes, at one time he raised white rabbits mm -hmm. and they kind of ended up on the dinner table eventually too, didn't yes, they? Yes, yes. But when they were babies, if it was real, real cold out, he'd bring the babies in the house so they didn't freeze. Oh, I love that. I got to play with some <laughs> baby rabbits. <laughs> Oh, that's neat. That's neat. Yes. Now, Peggy has, has been my sister-in-law for, gosh, well, I guess Chuck and I will be married 44 years this year. I guess that's right if I'm doing my math right. And always has been a good cook. In fact, Chuck always wanted to come to Peggy's house to eat, and she fed him well. He was down a lot, and uh, she always had fresh things out of the garden, and uh, you have continued to can, like I said, and do you have a big garden out this year? Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, nowadays we have two gardens. Mm -hmm. Not that we need them, but we do have four children who are all married, and we have nine grandchildren. And do they all come and help in the garden like you did as a little girl? No. <laughs> <laughs> yep, somehow it doesn't work that way this no, day and age, does no, it? No, but that's okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I know. But. Yeah. Well, your grandma and grandpa served you well, too. And she also taught you how to sew. Yes. 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 And you've sewn many of your children's clothes and clothes for other people all of yes, your life. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. So all of the things I learned have really been beneficial to me right. in my life. And they would be glad to know that it served me so well. Right. Well, you told me that um, you never realized that you were poor. No, I didn't know we were poor. And why was that? Because we always had plenty to eat. I always had nice clothes, just as nice as everyone else did. Mm -hmm. And I... I didn't, we had a TV, uh -huh. and that was back in right. early days of television. And Grandpa was always giving away things, He said. was always, we were always taking garden produce and eggs and things to other people. I didn't know we were poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and your your grandfather must have learned that from his dad too, right? Because it wasn't his dad that went around during the Spanish flu or was it him? No, it was my grandfather. Oh, your grandfather. Tell that yes. story. That was a wonderful story. Uh, during the flu epidemic back in the 19, whatever it was, 17, 18, 19, mm -hmm. whatever it was, he lived in Indianapolis. And in those days, of course, the family doctor went from house to house and my grandfather would go with him and make sure that the, the people who were ill had heat. In those days, they 
mostly heated with coal or wood. And if they didn't have something enough coal or wood, he would have someone bring it to him and make sure they had something to eat. And he said, all you had to do was tell a neighbor they're sick and they need something and they'd make a pot of soup or something and set it on their porch. They wouldn't go in, but they, and my grandfather went in houses from house to house with a family doctor, never got the flu. Never got the Spanish flu. Never. Wow. Wow. Well, he was a good man. And there was evidently lots of other things for him to do in his life. That's why he didn't get that Spanish flu. I guess so. And I one of so. them was making such a difference in your life. Yes. Because yes. Uh, all the things that you sat here and told me about him, I can see them in and have seen them in you for Peggy. You've oh. always been a helper. You've always been a giver and always been first in line to offer a hand any time that you can. Oh, thank you. So oh. it's... Uh, it's neat to sit and listen to know where that came from, from your grandma That's and grandpa. That's where it came from. Not just at Summers, but for your entire childhood, yes. correct? Yes, right, grandma oh, yes. Grandpa. So, yes. Yeah. yes. Well, what looked to many people probably as an unfortunate thing in the time was sure a blessing to you. Yes. And I thank you for sharing with us well, today thank you. about thank you. memories of... Uh, summer times and all times at grandma's house well i want to thank you for your the wonderful job you do at seniors oh, peggy that's... it's it's i enjoy it so much when i go well, and thank... looking forward to seeing everyone again well i am too so thanks a bunch peggy and thank you as I was leaving Peggy's house, she said to me, oh, I forgot to tell you one more story. I forgot to tell you about Grandpa and how he loved his ice cream. Every night he had to have ice cream. He lived until his late 90s, and he ate ice cream every single day. And uh, he also loved all the sweet things that Peggy learned to bake from Grandma. And when he was in the nursing home in his later years, he told her, I'll tell you what I want for my birthday. I want a big apple pie. So Peggy, being the sweet gal that she is, she baked her granddad the most beautiful pie. Her kids were young. And so the kids loaded in the car with this great big full apple pie, great big, like 10 inch apple pie, 12 inch apple pie. They stopped at the grocery store and they got ice cream and they got to the nursing home and the kids were ready to put the plates out and have a party for granddad. And, and he said, um, well, Peggy, you take that ice cream down the hall and you tell the lady in the kitchen to put my name on it and put it in the refrigerator. And Peggy said, well, aren't we going to sit here and have a little party and eat it? And he said, well, no. He said, I have invited three of my friends to come down. And after we've had dinner tonight, we're going to have that pie. So much to the dismay of her kids that were with her, <laughs> they took the ice cream and the pie down to the kitchen. And she said he called later and said that those three friends plus him ate that entire pie that night with the ice cream. So anyway, that was a that was a fun story. Uh, it's just it was great listening to Peggy remember things of her grandparents' house. Behind me, I have something that reminds me of my grandparents' house. This was a quilt that my grandmother made. I believe it was called a bow tie quilt and it has uh, all kinds of fabrics in it that uh, her um, kids had clothes out of. And uh, I, I love having this. I love having this memory. Here was another one of my memories from Grandma Smith's house. One of those dolls that we all got to look at but never got to touch. Well, this was one of those dolls from Grandma Smith's house. And in that front room, they had an old player piano and we'd sit and we'd sing all kinds of songs and it was so much fun. But probably the most special times would be when Grandma Smith would pull me up on her lap. And so I couldn't have been, but maybe two or three years old and she would sing me songs. And there are three songs that I especially remember her, her singing to me. Uh, this one, especially. Where is my kitty, my pretty white kitty? I've hunted the place all around. 
I've looked in the cradle and under the table, but nowhere can Kitty be found. So I took my hook and I went to the brook to see if my Kitty was there. And there I found my Kitty had drowned and I went off in despair. Poor Kitty, poor Kitty. And I went off in despair. Now, wasn't that a sad song for a grandma to sing her two or three year old granddaughter? But that was one of Grandma Smith's favorite. This one's not quite so sad, I don't believe. Won't you come over to my house? Won't you come over and play? I have some playthings, a dolly or two. I live in the house cross the way. I'll give you candy and sweet things. I'll put your hair in a curl. Won't you come over to my house and play like you're my little girl? Oh, playmate. Come out and play with me and bring your dollies three. Climb up my apple tree, shout down my rain bear, slide down my cellar door, and we'll be jolly friends forevermore. So sorry, playmate, I cannot play with you. My dolly's got the flu. Boo hoo 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 hoo. Ain't got no rain bear. Ain't got no cellar door. But we'll be jolly friends forevermore. <laughs> Those are probably the first three songs I can really always remember. Oh, well, jolly friends forevermore reminds me of something else. Last week, I forgot to do a card shower, and we have a friend that could use one this week. Mary Lou Johnson has just kind of been under the weather with some health problems. I spoke with her, and she just tries to remain so positive, but I think a thinking of you card or a feel better card for Mary Lou would be just what the doctor ordered this week. So let's see if we can't shower her. Mary Lou Johnson, Post Office Box 194, Fairland, Indiana, 46126. Okay, let's see if we can't make Mary Lou's day. And before we head on down the street to visit another one of our friends, I think we need one more song for this beautiful summer day. In the good old summertime, in the good old summertime, strolling down the shady lanes with your baby mine. You hold her hand and she holds yours, and that's a very good sign that she's your
in the good old summertime, in the good old summertime, strolling down the shady lanes with your baby mine, you hold her hand, she holds yours, and that's a very good sign that she's your The good old summer time. Hi, folks. Look who I have here. I am on a very busy Main Street, right, in Fairland, and I'm with Susan Collins, a dear friend and my super duper helper at Seniors. So it's so good to see you today, Susan. It's good to be here. <laughs> yep, it is. You've been busy. You told me you were out earlier today. Tell me where you were at earlier. Well, uh, since the virus, we, I haven't been to Silver Sneakers for three months, and they started up Monday. So uh, went Monday and went today, three days a week. If you are interested in applying, going, call the Shelby County Athletic Club. Okay, you've, you've done that for some time and yes. you've really enjoyed it, haven't yes. you? Yes, it's wonderful. Great. It, now I know how out of shape I am after three months of oh. not doing anything. Oh, we all know that. We all know that. But they're opening up with limited people yes. and cleaning extra. And yes. so it's a good way to ease back into that, mm -hmm. that exercise routine. I certainly need to do that. I need to do that myself. Well, today we're talking about going to grandma's house. And I know I had so many memories after listening to Cindy's uh, little essay about g remembering grandma. And, and I know you grew up in the country down in Kentucky. And, mm -hmm. and I bet you can tell me some stories that uh, from grandma's house. Uh, I had both my grandmothers. Uh, one uh, was extra special, my mother's mom. She just lived down the road, maybe two or three miles. Uh, I have two sisters and we would walk to her house when mom didn't need us for a while. How many miles? Two to three miles, oh one my, way oh on God. a gravel road. On a gravel road, okay. And we would go visit grandma and help her do stuff that we thought was work at home. <laughs> but it wasn't work at grandma's house. <laughs> you bring up a good point there, for sure. What kind of things did you work? and play with when you were at grandma's then? We would help her in the garden. Mm -hmm. We would help her pick apples, peel apples, dry apples. She loved to dry apples. How did they dry apples back they then? They would uh, put a screen, you know, just slice them and put them on a screen and put them out in the sun. You're kidding. Or maybe up on a tin roof sometimes. Really, and they would dry out and then yes. they'd just put them, I and guess they didn't have plastic bags. Uh, if they had a freezer, uh, okay. most of the time they just, I think they just kept them in okay. whatever. Uh, we would um, help her maybe cook. She would she would love to make pies, so we would mm -hmm. do that. But what I remember um, most is playing po Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head? Like, like Mr. Potato yes. Head like we know yes. it now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she would have that game. We did not have that at home, so we would play that at Grandma's house. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Gosh, now that you say that, I try to think of some of the things I remembered playing at grandma's because she always had toys, like you said, that we didn't have, right. mm -hmm. have at home. I remember she had two little magnetic dogs, a little white one and a little black one. And they looked like Scottish Terriers and they had magnets on the bottom and, and they wouldn't, they'd stick on things, but not on each other. That's one thing mm -hmm. I remember. And marbles, oh she yes, had marbles. tons of marbles, so. And my grandfather, which was actually a step-grandfather, but it's the only one I ever knew, he played the fiddle. And we love to oh, listen to him play the fiddle. I bet. I bet you and your sisters just yeah. danced around. We and, did. <laughs> oh, I bet that was fun. Did your grandma play an instrument or no, anything? No, she did no. not. But granddad did. And um, my mother was actually born in Indiana. Ah. And she moved to Kentucky when she was 12. Okay. And um, and I have told the story that my grandfather, my real grandfather, uh, was killed. Uh, he was hit by a car on Christmas Eve. Oh, my. And he was 55 years old. So after that, she married just uh, the only grandfather I ever knew. 
Uh -huh. So, and okay. he was really good to us. I also remember uh, on Sunday afternoons, uh, Grandma and Charlie, that's what we would call <laughs> it, would take us uh, on rides in their car. And we would drive around the neighborhood. I mean, you know, maybe miles and miles Sure. On a Sunday afternoon, we we loved it. Sure. Now, did your family have a car? We had a car. Okay. But okay. Uh, it wasn't the same as being with grandma. Being grandma. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's true. It's so funny what you said about stuff that was work at home. It wasn't work at grandma's. No. It was it was more fun. Yeah. Well, I know one thing in particular that stuck out for me when I read Cindy's thing was the rhubarb thing. I mean, rhubarb is an old country. Thing. Yes. I've had rhubarb my life and I love rhubarb, but I never heard tell of eating it with salt on it. Have you? No, I have never heard that. Have, and maybe might want to try it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, they, they, they didn't do it in Kentucky either. I'm going to no. have to ask Cindy where it was her grandmother lived because I haven't yeah. run across anybody yet. I have never heard that. I had heard tell yeah. of that, but boy, I could relate to the rest of it the homemade yeah. bread cooking yes. and. Yes. The old pot belly stove, and and uh, did you ever spend the night at your grandma's? Not not so much. Uh, you lived she lived close. so close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I really don't remember, but we may have. I'm right. not sure. Right. Well, she talked about the old feather beds, and I know there were feather beds at my grandmother's house and feather pillows. Yes. And uh, boy, you you never got rid of those. You just uh, clipped them and got new new ticking for the outside of them, and you used mm -hmm. those feathers over. Mm -hmm. And on every one of those feather beds, there was a quilt that Grandma had made. Mm -hmm. And you know a little bit about that, right? <laughs> I know a little bit about quilts. Yes, your grandma made quilts. Yes, your she did. mother made quilts. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been kind of busy making quilts while we've been away, yes. right? Uh, when my mom passed away uh, almost 12 years ago, and I, no one else wanted her quilting frame, so I brought it home. And um, I ha that's what I've been doing since this pandemic. I have been upstairs quilting. Oh, for And I sake. have done two plus yours. Your oh, little one. Yes, the one for my birthday, folks. Wind, Remember, I showed winter. you that one on the first Kathy's Corner. Through yes. the wind, plus two baby quilts. So how many did, have you made? Uh, this, this, since January, I have quilt, no, since December, I have quilted two big quilts, and I have, and your little one, and two baby quilts. Oh my gosh, are your fingers sore? They, it does, I have arthritis. So oh, yes, I bet they are sore. Time. I bet they are. Well, I tell you, it's so beautiful out here, but I really love to go inside and see some of your grandma's quilts and some things you've been working on. Okay, great. Okay, let's do that. Oh, goodness, folks. She has got some beautiful things laid out here. Tell me about this first one that we're looking at, Susan. Who made this one? This is a quilt that my grandmother made. Okay. Uh, she would piece the top. Uh-huh. And she did not like to quilt, so my mom would put it in the frame and quilt it. Ah, so the both of them. This yes. was a mom and grandma quilt. This is at least 45 years old. Oh, goodness. And this would have laid out on that big frame that you told yes. me you quilt on that's yes. upstairs. Yes. Oh, look at all those pretty little squares and each one of them have been cut and sewn together. One thing about grandma, she did not, if if they didn't match, like this one right here, mm -hmm. she would pick something close. Sure. And it didn't it didn't really matter. Sure. It's just, that's grandma. Oh, it was beautiful. What was your grandma's name, Susan? Her name was Aline. Aline, that's Aline pretty. Bewley. There used to be some Bewleys in Fairland. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. And then it's hand quilted, not machine quilted. No, by my mom. By your mom. What was your mom's name? Her name was Mildred. Mildred. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. What else you got here to okay. show me? This is a special quilt. This is Around the World. Okay. And anyone who knows Around the World, it is, you start in the middle where this little white square is and you hand stitch, not by sewing machine. But this one is different and special that it is rectangles. Uh-huh. And mom would lay each row on the bed and sew them by machine. Oh my 
gosh, that is a lot of work. Each row. Be, yes, she would lay out each row and then she would sew. Oh. Otherwise, you would just start in the middle and go around by hand, do it by hand. I hope she had an extra room that she could lay this stuff yes, out on. Yes, she, she did. Otherwise, she had... it would never get off the bed for months. <laughs> it wouldn't for me. <laughs> oh, it's so, beautiful and the colors are so bright. So that is around the world. Around the world in rectangles. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Oh, and you have this one. Uh, it just interests me so. What a lot of work. And this is one that you did, right? Yes, yes. this is just, uh, this is a map. This is the United States. Every state in the Union, alphabetical order, the nickname, the capital, when they joined the Union. Um, I don't know. I had I did a lot of research on the computer to get I all this information. I would say that you did. Look at this, folks. I even put a United States full map there. You sure did in the center. And each corner and has... And every state is represented. Yes. That ought to hang in the White House or something. <laughs> I'm serious. And that a, is super. And a five-point star in the corners. Five-point star in the corners. My goodness, how long did it take you to do this? I would say this was like a year and a half or maybe up to two years, just getting everything together and then tracing each one of these. I print them out on, from the computer, print them out, right. and then trace them onto this white block. And then embroidery a lot of embroider it. Embroider all of it and use the oh, fabric, fabric markers on some of permanent it. Permanent to write But in. all of the states are embroidered and the states' names and when they were... Oh, when they joined the union, their nickname, the state bird, state flower. And there's a little gold star there for, the, for each and every one. We see the, the little gold star for the capital. Yes. Oh, Susan, that's just super neat. Oh, what a gift you have. I'm so glad that your grandma instilled that kind of uh, passion inside of you. Oh, and this is now, one of my favorites. This is really special to me. Uh, I would, if you want me, I'll tell the whole story. P tell the whole story. But Forgive this, me, folks, for my lousy job of being able to really look at this. Go this ahead. Is, this is the Dresden plate. Uh huh. In Christmas 1992, Mom decided she wanted to make a quilt for all of her daughters, daughter-in-law, granddaughters, and granddaughters-in-law. And we put our, put our name on a piece of paper and the name of the quilt we wanted and the color. And she drew one out and mine was the first one. Oh. And so I received this quilt on Christmas of 1993. Right. And uh, at that time, my dad was in the hospital. He had suffered a stroke and he passed away on Ju uh, January the 9th oh. of 94. So, so this is really special. It's a memory quilt, isn't yes. it? So colorful and so many beautiful pieces. I bet some of these were maybe dresses this when is, you were a little girl. This is a dress I remember. Oh, there, there are, are I know I go through them and there would be all, all right. kinds of them. Just gorgeous. Oh, Cindy, I think I might have had a dress out of that blue polka dot one there as I'm looking at it. Uh, I didn't call you, call you Cindy, Susan. <laughs> and remember, folks, it is June, not July. <laughs> um, Mom used to get a lot of material from Louisville Bedding Company. They would have scraps. Okay. And this is some of it, and this one. The Louisville Bedding Company. Yeah, they would make mattress covers. I don't know okay. what all they made, okay. but they would... Uh, oh. How neat. Oh, that is and just And another beautiful. thing, oh, this was done by machine, but right in the middle where the circle is was done by hand, and then this was all appliqued on a block. Okay. It was not done okay. on the sewing machine. Sure, sure. And then, but it's hand quilted. Yes, it's hand your, quilted. Your mom quilted the yes. back of, yeah. back of, see the pretty hand quilting on the back? That's what's just beautiful of uh, not just the fronts but the backs on yes. these wonderful pieces mm -hmm. of art oh too pretty susan too pretty i called her susan that time you heard that right <laughs> folks oh and tell me about this stack sit down there for a second and explain this this is a neat idea see she's got a quilted pillow back before she's gonna sit this is blocks of all the quilts i have done uh-huh in the past 12 years 
And this is Country Lanes. Uh-huh. Oh, I've this seen is a, this. That this was your is a sister's. Butter, yes, that I gave to my sister. Mm -hmm. We did these in Florida. Uh -huh. My two sisters helped me. Uh, this same thing, I give this to my oldest sister, Birds. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is one that my granddaughter will get next month. Oh. And we'll see that in just a minute. Yes. And this is uh, my oldest granddaughter, her graduation quilt. Oh. Of animals. That's neat. There's your state's quilt. Yep, there's Kentucky, of course. Yes, I had to do the Kentucky <laughs> one to keep. This is a bow tie. Oh, that's pretty. I've got a bow tie at home. This is a fly. Uh, what did they call that? Um, pinwheel. Yes, a pinwheel. Pretty. I couldn't even remember. Pretty. Yeah, it looks like a pinwheel. This one is really special. My uh, youngest granddaughter. Uh, made the four patches uh -huh. by hand uh -huh. and uh, then uh, I put them all together and made her a quilt out of it but oh. she she did um, she did all the four she, patches she did most of them so you're passing on that yes. so she can uh -huh. tell a story about her grandmother yes. someday this I love is it. this is just the regular nine patch uh -huh. this is a horizontal split nine patch that's pretty this I gave to our pastor's wife that's pretty this is um, one I gave, this is one that I did this winter and I call it the purple quilt, but it's really Rocky Road to Kansas. Oh, that's and, cool. And uh, Ron really liked it so much, I gave it to him on his birthday. I love it, that's cool. And um, this is almost the same, but I don't know the name of this one. That's neat too. It's, it's different, but it's- Kind almost, of a crazy quilt looking like yeah. I think. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's And this is a spider beautiful a, a star because it has beautiful eight and and these are all quilts that you have made yes. full quilts yes. with these patterns yes and so what's your intent then someday when i get enough to make a quilt i'm going to take and make a sampler out of each i, I save a block from each quilt i make and i'm going to make a sampler quilt well you keep at this rate and the thing will be big enough to cover the entire city of fairland <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot uh, and you've got a granddaughter that's graduating yes. from Triton, and this will be her quilt. This is, is her right? gradua This is her graduation quilt. Isn't that um, beautiful? Since I got this here, I made pillowcases to go with it to match. Look at that. Her granddaughter loves cats, so she's got a cat at the top and beautiful flowers and trim that matches the connecting pieces of a flower quilt. Oh, it's beautiful, Susan. And, and um. This little block. This is my favorite block. Uh, her name is Christy, and she drew this on January the 5th of 2013, and I just traced it onto the white material and put it in with her flower quilt. What a special grandma that would have thought to have done that, and she will remember that forever, Susan. And this quilt and also the one for my other one. Um, oh, that's just stunningly beautiful. This row right here has her name spelled out in it. Oh, the quilting part does? Yes. I mean, each flower, the, the beginning of each flower is oh, her name. Excuse me, folks, with my crazy... <laughs> ha hold that hold that across for me. So her name starts with, with, a, a, with the K, K. Wherever the K is at. Well, that's... Well, maybe. It would be on this row right here. On the second row. Yeah. There, kangaroo paw. Yeah, okay. Didn't yes. even know that was a flower. I, well, there's a flower of every alphabet, letter of the alphabet. Oh! K R I S T Y. And a yucca plant for the Y. Yeah. You are so creative. Where did you come up with that idea? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Susan, it's beautiful. Now, does she know she's going to get this? No, well, she probably knows she's going to get one because her sister got one, but, but she, she has no idea what it is. Oh, she will cherish that forever cherish it forever and you've got her sisters over here yes. sister must have been an animal lover yes or and, must be uh, an animal lover she is and uh that's why hers is animals and cassandra and her name is the same way through here uh-huh how thoughtful you are too talented lady and those are all hand embroidered folks yeah, and there's the row with her name on it right there Okay. And hers has a cow. Let me uh, see. No, Sorry, folks. On it. <laughs> Let me see if I can. There, cow and calf, armadillo, 
squirrel. What's that? Otter. Otter. Nightingale. Donkey. Donkey. Rabbit and rabbit and alligator. And alligator. If that is not and there is every animal of letter of the alphabet in there too. Oh, Susan. You should have at least put these in the fair. Dag on it. There's no fair this, this year. This took me at least nine months, maybe a little bit longer. Oh, I bet. Because I did the same, got on the computer, printed off the animals, and made your patterns, and, and then put the name of each one because some of them I wouldn't know. Oh, sure. Cow and calf. Oh, you ha are so talented. Oh, those girls are going to be talking about their grandma sometime when they're 70-something. 70, 70 you just yes. had a birthday yes, I did. yesterday. Yes, 72. I'm not ashamed 72. Of you shouldn't be. You wear it well, lady. You do, you do. Well, you've got one other little project I want to show everybody before we head out. Oh. Um, Gloria Miller, she's been to the seniors yes. a few times. Her great grand, her first great-granddaughter will be born next month and this is for her just beautiful look at and, all the little animals show them the back that you chose isn't that neat oh and then uh a teddy bear oh yes that matches of course and, and a little a, pillow uh, with an embroidered kitty on it and a, and a horsey oh susan it's just gorgeous I tell you, you are so gifted. I don't know how you have time to come to the senior center and help me. <laughs> I did this for three months when we couldn't do nothing else but stay home. So well, I put my time to good use. Oh, you sure have. You sure have. Well, I tell you, thank you so much for showing us and, and welcoming, welcoming me into your house. And um, before we leave, I want to make a trip outside and show them all your beautiful flowers. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, guys, here I go again. We need Chuck, don't we? He's the best cameraman. When I came up, I said, oh, Susan, everything looks so pretty. So you just stand there, Susan. I'll go get in the car and I'll take a picture of everything on my way out. How pretty your little house looks. How pretty you look standing there on the, on the corner. And folks, it's just been wonderful having a porch talk with Susan today and having her remember grandma and show us her beautiful quilts. Uh, thanks a bunch. I'll see you soon. Okay, lady? Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. It was great talking with Susan. And, and though she didn't have one of these uh, quilts easy to get when we were talking, she brought me one so I could show you an example of the quilt that Cindy referred to in her piece about going to grandma's house. This is one of those pieced quilts that there's a backing and then she sat in the middle and was able to run a needle through and, and tie the colorful yarn pieces. Susan told me that they referred to these as comforters and all of the other pieced things that were actually quilted in between, they called quilts. So I think it's different for everybody. I want to show you a quilt that my other grandmother made. I talked about Grandma Smith. This quilt was made by my mother's mom. Uh, her name was Nina Hendricks. Uh, in later life, it was Nina Tolan. She, after my grandfather died, she married Jim Tolan from down around London. And Grandma Nina, as long as I could remember, was quilting something. She did not have a quilting frame in her house. She did this with a big hoop on her lap. Uh, all of this is an applique quilt. I believe this was a dogwood blossom. So each piece was cut out and sewed or embroidered and sewed on, pieced together in this beautiful work and then all the quilting in between. She made one for all of her kids and her grandkids and many, many other folks along the way. And I'm blessed to have this to remember her. Isn't it beautiful? When I was going through my mother's things, I ran a across a card that uh, actually had uh, a quilt on it. Uh, it says, for a special grandma, and it was a birthday card sent to her from her, her granddaughter, Ashley, and uh, Troy, and Micah, and Lila. 
and the verse was so appropriate for today. For a special grandma, your love is like a cozy quilt, a patchwork of memories it holds. Touches of kindness and thoughtful deeds are tucked into its folds. The stitching is strong, yet softened with time, reflecting compassion and care. To all of the comfort this cherished quilt brings, few things can compare. I hope that you've enjoyed our trip down memory lane visiting Grandma's house today, and I hope that I will see you next week too on Kathy's Corner. Bye, folks. <laughs>